Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a five-year-old named Kylie and I also have a three-year-old named Mia. So for today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about an area of the Montessori approach that is not quite as commonly talked about, at least not in parenting circles, but it is a really big part of the Montessori classroom curriculum, and that is grace and courtesy. Now, I remember when I first discovered Montessori, I wasn't quite sure exactly what this was referring to. I mean, I guess I had an idea based on the words, but I wasn't entirely sure. And if you are finding yourself in the same boat, then I am hoping that today's video will help to demystify this a little bit for you. So from one busy parent to another, today I would like to share with you all about grace and courtesy, what it is, how it might be applied in the context of your home environment, and of course, some examples that you might find relevant in your Montessori home. Okay, so first things first, what does this term grace and courtesy mean? It is a bit of a dated term in my opinion, but we have to remember that the Montessori approach dates back to 1907. So that aside, um, we can think of grace and courtesy in terms of manners and positive social skills. That's really what it comes down to. It's all about how we conduct ourselves and how we're interacting with others in a positive, socially acceptable way. So to start out, we have to recognize that children are not born with with these skills. These are learned behaviors. And where do they learn these kinds of things? You guessed it, from you. They may also learn them from other primary caregivers in their lives, maybe their teachers at school if they go to school, but the most powerful learning experiences that they're going to have related to grace and courtesy are going to come from the most influential person in their lives, and that is their parent. So in a Montessori classroom environment, Grace and courtesy lessons are offered to the children very explicitly from the moment that they enter the classroom community. But you might be asking yourself, as a parent at home, how can I offer my child grace and courtesy lessons? And honestly, the methods are really not that much different. And there are primarily two different ways of going about this. So the first is through your own everyday modeling. And honestly, this is the more important one of the two because your child will always do as you do and not as you say. So you want to set the example. You want to actually show them what these behaviors look like so that they can see them in action and naturally imitate them as time goes on. And then the second way would be through more direct lessons in the moment as the need arises or potentially at a more neutral time using more of a role play scenario. Now of these two methods, which one you ultimately end up choosing to help your child learn a particular grace and courtesy skill is likely going to depend on what the skill actually is and the general context of the situation. So you're going to need to use a bit of your own parental discretion. So let's go through a couple of examples to help give you a feel for what I'm talking about. So let's start with some of the basics that I think come to mind for a lot of people. Things like saying please and thank you or no thank you, um, you're welcome, excuse me. And the best method to help your child learn these things is actually through your own modeling. Now, I know it may sound counterintuitive because in traditional parenting circles, there's a lot of emphasis, right, on making children say please and thank you. What's the magic word? And constantly reminding them, don't forget to say thank you, say thank you, you know, things like that. You hear that a lot. And so we are inaccurately led to believe that cajoling our children is the only way to teach them manners. When in fact, if we simply recognize that children between the age of birth and six years old are in the period of the absorbent mind, that they absorb everything in their environment, including our behavior and our language, that they will naturally pick it up if they hear it in their environment every day. So if you are saying please and thank you in the appropriate context, if you are saying excuse me, they will pick this up too. They will imitate it and eventually one day, it will naturally pop out of your child's mouth all by themselves and you will be astounded and amazed, I guarantee you, the first time it happens, but it will happen. You just have to trust in the process. And that means that it's also important for you to give your child direct eye contact when you're having a conversation. If you want your child to give you eye contact when you're talking to them and to give you their undivided attention, then you owe them the same courtesy when they're talking to you. And again, this also applies to basic mealtime etiquette as well. So if it's important to you that your child learn to sit at the family table, to use their utensils properly, to say, please pass the mashed potatoes, then these are things that you actually 
actually need to sit down and do with your child. If they see it modeled on a consistent basis, then they will internalize these skills for themselves. Now, I can't say that it's going to happen overnight, but if you are patient and again, consistent, then it will eventually happen. So now let's talk about some other grace and courtesy skills that are also quite basic in nature and can certainly be modeled for your child, but also lend themselves to being able to be taught in some more teachable moments, like when it's actually happening and also at neutral times during role play. So let's start off with learning how to greet somebody or how to say goodbye. This is likely something your child is going to observe many times over. Anytime you have a guest over to your house or if you go out of the house somewhere else, they're going to see it a lot, right? But we also know that children, especially young children, they tend to be a little bit shy and that's because they don't have these skills yet. They don't know how to do these things and so they tend to clam up. And so what you can do to help mitigate that, this way your child does not feel put on the spot, you know, in the moment in front of somebody else where they don't have the skill and they're like, ah, instead you can actually practice how to greet somebody and how to say goodbye at a neutral time. And you can do it just with you and your child, or if there's other siblings in the house, you can practice as a small group. Some children also really take to role play with their stuffed animals or dolls. So that's something you can try, but actually allowing them to practice, giving them the language that they need to use when the time actually comes to greet somebody or to say goodbye. This way, when that moment arrives, they know what to do. They feel more comfortable and they feel empowered. Another example of a skill that is most effective when taught in the moment, but can also certainly be role played, is teaching your child how to ask for a hug from someone else. Oftentimes children are very excited to give hugs to their peers, their siblings, to other adults and they don't recognize this concept of body consent and asking somebody for a hug first. And it can make other children feel really uncomfortable at times, or maybe even other adults. So you can teach your child how to ask somebody for a hug and how to respectfully accept if they say no. So again, if a teachable moment arises where it's appropriate for you to step in and show your child how to ask for a hug, then certainly do so or maybe you can wait till a later time and role play it out with some dolls or stuffed animals. And also don't forget the importance of your own modeling in this. If you can remember to ask before giving a hug, then your child is more likely to ask before giving a hug. Another example is teaching your child how to ask for a turn with something, or if they see another child engaged in play, how they can politely ask if it's okay that they join. And then on the flip side of that, if your child is the one who's playing with something and another child approaches and says, may I have a turn or can I join you? If your child is not interested in that, then they need the language that they can use to politely say to the other child, no, I'm still using this right now. It will be available soon. And if you have more than one child at home, I can almost guarantee that you will have plenty of teachable moments in which you can step in and offer your child a lesson on how to ask for a turn or how to politely decline another child joining their play. And if you only have one child, then this is something that perhaps you can role play at a neutral time so that when your child does go out on a play date, they have an understanding of how they can communicate their wants and desires to the other child in a respectful way. Another really useful grace and courtesy skill that your child should learn is how to politely interrupt you. If you're having a conversation with someone else, if you're helping another child with something, if you are busy at all and your child needs your attention, how is it that they should get your attention in a way that is polite and respectful? And so this is something that you can actually teach your child in the moment and also role play if you need to. But the most common way that you'll see used in Montessori environments is the waiting hand. And it's actually really simple and easy for a young child to remember, especially after they've practiced it a couple times. So what you want to tell them is anytime you need my attention, you can put your hand on my shoulder like this, or maybe if I'm standing, you can put it on my side right here, and then you can wait for me to look at you, and then you can tell me what you need. Another big one is your child learning how to ask for help. So when they're pre-verbal, possibly even when they're still infants, you can actually teach them sign language to ask for help, and that can be really useful. But as they get a little bit older and they are more verbal, you know, sometimes toddlers get really frustrated about something when it doesn't go their way, their tower falls over, what have you. And instead of just asking for help, they just immediately default to screaming and yelling and having a fit. And so you can actually give them some language, teach them 
how to ask for help in those kinds of situations before it gets to that you know level of frustration and again i think this is one that really lends itself to those teachable moments so maybe not in the moment when your child is screaming and frustrated but after a few minutes when they've had some time to calm down you can give them the language that you want them to use to ask for your help in the future empower them with the skills that they need you might also consider offering your child grace and courtesy lessons for basic things like pushing in their chair at the table when they get up to leave instead of just leaving it out or actually knowing how to carry a chair from point A to point B without dragging it across the floor and making really horrible noises with it that could potentially be disturbing other people in your home. And also carrying things with two hands. So that might be the chair that they're carrying from point A to point B, but it also might be the trays that they're taking from their activity shelf to work on at a table or somewhere on the floor or a glass of water at meal times, or their plates when they're done with a snack and they're cleaning up and bringing it to the kitchen. Actually taking a moment to stop and show them, this is how we carry the tray, or this is how we carry our glass of water with two hands close to our body. This way they can actually see these kinds of like small details that might otherwise be overlooked because they're just young children. And also remembering to model it ourselves. I know it can feel kind of awkward sometimes to carry a glass of water with two hands or to carry a, you know, a, an activity tray that's fairly light for us with two hands, but if they're watching us and they're seeing that we're using two hands, again, they're more likely to imitate that behavior. So whenever we know our child is watching us, we should make it a habit to model that kind of behavior if that's what we want them to do. And then one final example, and it's a big one, is your child learning how to apologize to another person when they've made a mistake. So in the Montessori approach, we do not force children to apologize ever because we want the apology to be genuine, not just an empty phrase. And the best way that we can help our child to learn this skill is modeling. Whenever we make a mistake, making a point of it to offer a genuine apology whether that be to our child or to another person while our child is watching. This way they have the opportunity to absorb the language, what it sounds like to offer somebody an apology. And if they're on the receiving end, so that they can feel what it feels like when somebody is genuine in saying, I'm sorry. And then for babies and toddlers and even preschoolers, before our children have acquired this skill for themselves, we're actually modeling this language on our child's behalf, you know? So I'm so sorry that you got hurt, are you okay? And letting our child hear what that apology sounds like and doing it for them until they're able to do it themselves. This is actually a much more effective strategy in the long term because if you think about it, we don't want our child to think of an apology as just some empty words that need to be said so that the situation can be over with. We want our child to understand that an apology is supposed to come from a genuine heartfelt place of empathy for the other person. And so when our child actually chooses to apologize, we'll know that they mean it. All right, friends, so those are just a few examples of the many possible grace and courtesy lessons that you can be offering to your child at home. I'm sure there are many more that you can think of that are relevant to your particular family culture and community. But ultimately, what I hope you will remember is that our children are not born with these skills. They have to be learned. And we have to have patience, you know? We don't rush our child in learning how to crawl or walk, and grace and courtesy skills should be no different. There is no reason to rush our child through them. Children learn best through our consistent modeling and also our patient coaching as they learn these skills until they're able to internalize them for themselves. So I hope you found this helpful. And if you're interested in learning more about Montessori at home or positive discipline parenting, then be sure to check out my new book called The Montessori Home, Create a Space for Your Child to Thrive. I also have several online e-courses and a community just for Montessori parents. And if you're looking for more one-on-one -on -one support, I also offer live video consultations. So I'll be sure to put links to all of those resources in the description box down below for you to check out. If you're new to my channel, then definitely be sure to take a look at my entire Montessori at home playlist, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori at home with our children. And if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching more of, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.